Hello and welcome to El Segundo News, where we inform you about issues and topics happening in the city of El Segundo. I'm Martha Guzman Hurtado. In response to the surge in COVID-19 cases in California and to decrease hospitalizations and deaths, California Governor Gavin Newsom issued a limited stay-at-home order to protect essential workers and high-risk individuals. The order, which went into effect November 21st and continues through December 21st, prohibits all non-essential travel and activities from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. in Purple Tier counties. El Segundo is part of L.A. County, which remains at Purple Tier 1, the most restrictive tier. For more information, please visit elsegundo.org and look in the news section. Also in response to the significant increase in COVID-19 cases and the hospitalization rate, the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health issued additional safety measures to reduce the risk of exposure effective November 30th through December 20th, 2020. The temporary health officer order requires individuals to stay home with their immediate household except to travel to and from essential business, including work or to obtain services from an essential governmental function or to engage in essential activities. The order reduces capacity at retail, office and other locations where people may come in contact with others outside of their household. The new order also prohibits all public and private gatherings with individuals outside of your household except for church services and protests. The new restrictions are in addition to the three-week ban on on-site dining at restaurants, breweries, wineries, and bars that went into effect November 25th. The restrictions will remain in place for the next three weeks to bring the five-day average of cases to 4,000 or below. Playgrounds are required to close as part of the temporary Safer at Home order, except for playgrounds at childcare facilities and schools. As a result, all playgrounds in El Segundo Parks were closed on November 30th to align with the new safety measures. The following recreational services are impacted through December 20th. As mentioned earlier, all playgrounds are closed. Shared outdoor facilities remain open, including parks, tennis courts, pickleball courts, and the skate park for individuals and or members from the same household to use. Physical distancing and face coverings are required. Swimming pool activities will be limited to outdoor lap swim only. Lap swimmers must swim one per lane. Team sports are prohibited unless with members from the same household. All recreational operations will be closed between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. For more information and updates, visit elsegundo.org and look in the news section. This year, it's lights off for Candy Cane Lane. The magical holiday lights destination attracting thousands of visitors to El Segundo is not taking place this year due to COVID-19 safety restrictions. Due to COVID-19 safety protocols and the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health officer order prohibiting large public events and gatherings, the event organizers decided to cancel this year's festivities. The city encourages the community to celebrate the holidays responsibly by fully complying with all applicable safety measures to slow the spread of COVID-19. COVID-19. Per the temporary Safer at Home order, the reopening of grades TK through 2nd can proceed. The El Segundo Unified School District has proposed a December 8th reopening date for Center Street and Richmond Street schools. According to Superintendent Dr. Melissa Moore, ESUSD officials will continue to monitor the Department of Public Health orders over the next few weeks. Please visit elsegundousd.net for continued updates. Out of an abundance of caution to limit exposure in response to the surging COVID-19 cases, the City of El Segundo is changing operations at City Hall. As of December 1st, City Hall and other non-public safety facilities will be open by appointment only until further notice. City Hall will remain open for business from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. To make an appointment with a specific department, visit elsegundo.org to view a complete staff directory or call the main line at 310 524-2300. The safety and well-being of employees and the public remains the city's top priority. The City of El Segundo appreciates your patience and understanding during these difficult times. We understand that this time of year can be tough for some people who are suffering from loss and depression. Social distancing, feelings of isolation, and other pandemic-driven anxieties may also be adding to these difficult times. Dr. Mona Kumar, clinical psychologist, tells us how to identify depression and cope. Feelings of sadness and loss of pleasure are the two most common symptoms of depression. In children and adolescents, depression may look more like irritability and anger, whereas in adults, you're more likely to see sadness and withdrawal. If you think you or your loved one is depressed, don't ignore the signs. Get help. With appropriate social support, changes in lifestyle, therapy, and in some cases medication, depression can be treated. If you need additional help, please call the LA County Mental Health Hotline at 
7771 or text LA to 741741. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. Again, that number for the LA County Mental Health Hotline is 1-800-854-7771 or text the letters LA to 741-741. Economic Development Coordinator Cristina Reveles has our El Segundo business update. What's the latest, Cristina? If you're a restaurant owner in the city of El Segundo, there's a new grant opportunity on the menu for you. The LA County has announced it will be launching the Keep LA County Dining Grant Program to provide financial assistance to restaurants affected by COVID-19 restrictions. The program will provide $30,000 for employee payroll expenses, capital to continue operations, payment of outstanding business expenses, and adaptive business practices needed to remain open. The application period will open Thursday, December 3rd at 12 a.m. and remain open through December 6th at 11.59 p.m. or until 2,500 applications are received, whichever comes first. To apply, visit keeplacountydining.lacda.org. It's official, holiday shopping is in full swing, and if you're looking for the perfect stocking stuffer, consider buying a gift card from El Segundo Restaurants for those on your list. With the new restrictions on the restaurant community, supporting your favorite local eatery, whether for pickup or delivery, is now more important than ever. Visit gundatogo.com for a full list of restaurants offering takeout and find out your new favorite to-go spot. Looking for a gift that keeps on giving? The El Segundo Chamber has partnered with El Segundo nonprofits and service organizations along with our business community to support local small businesses by launching the El Segundo Gifts Thanks campaign. By spending at a local business and submitting your receipt of $10 or more, you'll be entered for a chance to win over $7,000 in gift cards to businesses located here in El Segundo. For details, visit elsegundochamber.com. Thanks, Christina. The El Segundo Police Department has made major improvements to its firing range. Updates include new LED lighting, ventilation, soundproofing, and a new target turning system. Sergeant Luke Muir gives us the details. So I'd like to give credit to Sergeant Dale Ramblege, our lead firearms instructor, for seeing this project through start to finish. We're about 90% complete, and the total cost is around $270,000. There's obvious benefits to the sound dampening, but the new panels that we put on, not only do they dampen the sound, but they absorb some of the overpressure that's generated from shooting. And that pressure that's generated from people firing guns is really bad for officers internally if they're in there for extended periods of time. So now that these panels absorb some of that pressure, it's a lot safer in there. The new target turning system makes it so that we can have more officers on the range at once. We can get through our qualification days a lot more efficiently and not to mention it's now a lot safer in the range. And it also opens up a lot more possibilities for us on what kind of training that we do with the officers. We're not stuck with just qualification shoots. There's a lot more variety of training we can do. We're trying to get more into scenario-based, reality-based training that studies have shown makes officers better, makes uh, them make better decisions. The better officer that we have out on the streets, the safer the community is gonna be. The shooting range is also used to train police officers in defensive tactics and arrest and control techniques. And the El Segundo Police Department is reminding residents to lock their doors, turn on their lights, and remove valuables from their vehicles. It's all part of a national campaign called the 9 p.m. routine. We saw an increase of thefts from vehicles here in El Segundo, and after doing some research, we found that a lot of other cities are implementing this 9 p.m. routine and reminding residents to lock their doors, turn on their lights, and take out any valuables from their car. Every night at 9 p.m., we send out to all of our social media pages a reminder. Sometimes you just forget. You have a long day, you sit down, and you're like, you see the post, 9 p.m., did I lock my door? Did I take out those um, valuables out of my car? And we just make sure that it's done and everyone um, completes their tasks. It's a really good crime prevention strategy. Um, just by locking your car, uh, you're already preventing yourself from being a victim of a crime. You can visit the El Segundo Police Department's social media pages for those nightly reminders. Look for the hashtag 9 p.m. routine. 
The roller hockey rink at Recreation Park will receive a much-needed revamp with the help of the LA Kings. The National Hockey League team plans to donate $25,000 per year over the next three years for a total of $75,000 to help renovate the rink. Along with the necessary repairs, the city will install LA Kings graphics at different locations in the rink. The renovations are expected to begin in January and be complete by March. Los Angeles World Airports has extended the comment period for an environmental impact report to Friday, February 12th. This allows residents to comment on the LAX airfield and terminal modernization project. The project will include adding two new concourses to LAX that could have congestion and noise impacts on El Segundo. For details and to comment, please visit the news section at elsegundo.org. The annual Living Library collaboration between the El Segundo Museum of Art, also known as ESMOA, and the El Segundo Public Library went entirely virtual this year. Reporter Natasha Gascon has the story. Thanks, Martha. In this time of social distancing, making new connections is harder than ever. But that hasn't stopped the El Segundo Museum of Art and the El Segundo Public Library from hosting their annual Living Library event this past month. Both the museum and the library remain closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, so this year's event took place entirely online. The Living Library is an interactive event where members of the public spend time with a pre-selected living book, a person with a unique experience or a compelling story to share. The theme of this year's event was care, with organizers encouraging participants to gain new perspectives and ways of thinking through the one-on-one -on -one conversations with the living books who are all chosen for the work they are doing to care for their communities, from housing the homeless, supporting farm workers, and working with children. I think it's important for me to be a living library book because unfortunately we do have a lot of those like biases slightly ingrained and it's important to remind people that stereotypes aren't true and that you can break past them. I thought it was a really cool opportunity to share my story and my opinions and things because um, a lot of people too, like with my career, obviously that's what this is based on. Um, people just see like the outside and people like underneath this uniform, we're all real people. Like I have my friends, I have my family, like we're not robots. I loved it actually. I really didn't think it was bad. I felt like you pulled, you went into a different room and yeah, I mean, you really, it felt I just agree. as good. I agree. I think in some respects it was almost easier as a participant. You could tell the readers were like, they were really vested in them. They really were proud of what they're doing. And it just bounced right back. And I think they felt good. We felt good. I mean, how could you not feel good after that? It's such a benefit to anybody who partakes, like the reader or the, the uh, book. So um, I would say keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank okay. you. Despite all the challenges that this year has brought us, one thing remains the same. Sitting down and sharing our stories makes our city and ourselves stronger. For El Segundo Media, this is Natasha Gascon reporting. Back to you, Marta. Thanks, Natasha. For more virtual events at ESMOA or the El Segundo Public Library, visit esmoa.org and elsegundolibrary.org. You still have time to donate to the Spark of Love online toy drive taking place through December 24th. This year, the toy drive is an all-virtual effort partnering with MyRegistry.com to adhere to COVID-19 safety protocols. To donate, visit MyRegistry.com forward slash gift list forward slash Spark of Love or text the word SPARK to 24365. The Spark of Love toy drive is the largest toy drive in the nation. That's it for this segment of El Segundo News. You can also watch more city-related videos on the El Segundo Media YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time, and please stay safe and continue to wear your face covering. We'll leave you with a look at all the festive decorations in downtown El Segundo.